The British American Land Company Balk, was formed in 1832 and promoted by John Galt, Edward Ellis and others to acquire and manage the development of almost 1,100,000 acres 1,719 square miles, 4,452 square kilometers of Crown land and other lands in the eastern townships of Lower Canada, in order to encourage the immigration of British subjects to the region. In comparison to the Canada Company, a similar enterprise in Upper Canada that thrived through collaboration with the local government, the Balk indulged in land speculation, made immigration a secondary priority, and struggled throughout its existence. History Origin and formation Following the success of the Canada Company in spurring settlement efforts in Upper Canada, similar efforts were initiated to establish a similar company to promote settlement in the eastern townships of Lower Canada. A group of investors in Montreal, headed by Francis Nathaniel Burton, proposed organizing a Lower Canada Land Company, and sent William Bowman Felton to London to promote their venture. While there, he encountered a group with similar objectives. The groups decided to combine together, and, at a meeting in February 1832, decided to proceed with creating the British American Land Company. It was incorporated by Royal Charter in March 1834, and secured a private act from the Parliament of the United Kingdom, enabling it to operate directly in any of the provinces and colonies in British North America by virtue of the Royal Charter, and appoint commissioners and agents for the purpose of purchasing and disposing of land therein. Where any seigneurial lands are acquired by the company whether held a titre de fief au seigneurie, a titre de fief en arrière fief, or a titre de quens, commute all feudal and seigneurial rights, so that such lands will be held in free and common saccage and any crown lands acquired by the company would have the same status, and hire indentured servants, for periods of time not to exceed seven years, for service in British North America, the following commissioners would be appointed Peter McGill and George Moffat acting jointly 1834 Arthur C. Webster 1835 John Fraser 1837 Alexander Tillich Galt 1844 to 1855 Richard William Henneker 1856 to 1902 James Davidson 1903 George Kate Topic Land Holdings and Later Interests Topic: Initial activities. In December 1833, it was announced that an agreement had been reached with Edward Smith Stanley, Secretary of State for War and the Colonies, to acquire a total of 847,661 acres (1,324 square miles, 3,430 square kilometers) for a purchase price of 120,000 liras. This consisted of 596,325 acres, 932 square miles, 2,413 square kilometers of unsurveyed lands in the county of Sherbrooke, together with 251,336 acres, 393 square miles, 1,017 square kilometers in Crown reserves and surveyed Crown lands in the counties of Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke, Shefford and Stansted. 
It would later acquire further lands through public auctions and private sales, bringing its total holdings up to 1,094,272 acres, 1,710 square miles, 4,428 square kilometers. Upon Fraser's appointment in 1835, the company's activities began in earnest, being concentrated in three places. Sherbrooke, as the company's headquarters Victoria, in Lingwick Township, as the centre of settlement activities Port St. Francis, at the foot of Lake Saint-Pierre, as the port of entry for the district. Colonisation efforts Wharves and warehouses were constructed at Port St. Francis, as were grist mills, sawmills and other facilities within the territory. Lands were sold subject to a 20% down payment, with the balance payable in three subsequent annual installments, and the company also offered to help clear the land and build a log house upon it for an extra charge. During 1836, during the first year of activity, 300 families had settled in Victoria, occupying 23,000 acres, 35.9 square miles, 93.1 square kilometers, while 10,000 acres, 15.6 square miles, 40.5 square kilometers had been sold in other districts by deliberately working to increase the English speaking portion of the population of Lower Canada. It was was denounced by the Party Patriot and was referred to in the 92 resolutions adopted by the Legislative Assembly of Lower Canada in 1834. It was also denounced during the Lower Canada Rebellion in 1837, where a proclamation issued by Patriot leader Robert Nelson declared that all unsold company lands are of right the property of the state of Lower Canada. The expenses incurred to open up the lands were high in relation to the revenues earned from their subsequent disposition. The 1837 rebellion discouraged immigration to Lower Canada, frightening off the better class of potential immigrants, and many of the current settlers were defaulting on their payments or even abandoning their lands. Many of the local agents were also neglecting their duties or pilfering the company stores, and the company resisted attempts by local councils to impose property taxes on its holdings. This would eventually lead to the company experiencing financial problems in 1841, forcing it to return 511,237 acres, 799 square miles, 2069 square kilometers of the St. Francis Tract to the province of Canada in 1843. The company began focus its efforts on selling land to the local French Canadian population, disposing it on new terms terms, consisting of no down payment, interest payments only for the first ten years, with the principal then being payable in four equal annual installments. In the beginning, such obligations could be settled by payment in kind. In 1858, the company returned a further 292,729 acres, 457 square miles, 1,185 square kilometers to the province in consideration for certain sums due to the crown. Topic Exploitation of natural resources and manufacturing The company's finances would subsequently improve, and its earnings would be invested in other industrial concerns, including railroads, mining and Sherbrooke's textile mills, and it would operate other industrial enterprises itself. It would also get into the business of lending money, and, in 1876, the law governing interest was modified with respect to the loans made by the company, so that it could charge an annual rate up to 8%, in place of the then legal maximum of 6%. It would also begin to sell landholdings in large blocks for their value as timber. 
In 1872, it sold 99,833 acres, 156 square miles, 404 square kilometers, to Cyrus Sullivan Clark of Bangor, Maine, who purchased a further 7,901 acres, 12 square miles, 32 square kilometers from the company in the following year. These holdings were approximately half the size of the crown timber limits that he already possessed. <laughs> Later years By 1910, it had sold the greater part of its holdings, but continued to operate until its dissolution in 1948. Most of the company's records appear to have since been carelessly destroyed. Topic: <laughs> Coat of Arms. Topic: <laughs> Further reading History Day, Catherine Matilda 1869. History of the Eastern Townships. Montreal, John Lovell. Channel, Leonard Stewart 1896. History of Compton County, and Sketches of the Eastern Townships, District of St. Francis, and Sherbrooke County. Cookshire, L.S. Channel. Myers, Gustavus History of Canadian Wealth. Chicago, Charles H. Kerr & Co. Fournier, Marcel La Colonie Nantes de Lac Megantic, une implantation française au Québec au XIXe siècle The Colony from Nantes at Lake Megantic, a French settlement in 19th century Quebec in French. Montreal, Editions du Septetrion. ISBN 978-2-89448-692-4, Academic Works Smith, Charles David 1976. Land, Colonization and Development in Quebec, 1800–1850, The Role of Land Alienation, Colonization and the British American Land Company on Quebec's Development, 1800–1850 PDF M.A. McGill University. Little, John Irvin 1977. The Peaceable Conquest, French-Canadian Colonization in the Eastern Townships during the 19th Century PDF PhD. University of Ottawa. Little, John Irvin 1981. Colonization and Municipal Reform in Canada East. Histoire Social, Social History. 14 27, 93-121. Little, John Irvin 1989. Ethno-Cultural Transition and Regional Identity in the Eastern Townships of Quebec PDF. Canada's Ethnic Groups. Ottawa, Canadian Historical Society. ISBN 0-88798-116-X. ISSN 1715-8605. Little, John Irvin 1989. Nationalism, Capitalism, and Colonization in Nineteenth-Century Quebec, the Upper St. Francis District. McGill-Queen's University Press. ISBN 0-7735-0699-3, Biographer Skelton, Oscar Douglas 1920. The Life and Times of Sir Alexander Tillich Galt. Toronto, Oxford University Press. Kesterman, Jean-Pierre Galt, Sir Alexander Tillich. In Halpenny, Frances G. Dictionary of Canadian Biography. 12 1891–1900 online ed. University of Toronto Press. Rudin, Ronald Henneker, Richard William. In Cook, Ramsey, Hamlin, Jean. Dictionary of Canadian Biography. 14 1911 online ed. University of Toronto Press. Notes and references Notes <laughs> 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 <laughs>